All this time, we got the fable of Sleeping Beauty wrong. The prince didn't kiss her to wake her up. No one who's slept for a hundred years is likely to wake up. It was the other way around. He kisses her to wake himself up from the nightmare that has brought him here. What was your question? <laughs> Max Payne's voice is probably the most iconic in gaming. That's a really biased statement to make. But for me, it's he has the, uh, the most memorable voice from all the games I've played. And a lot of gamers know exactly what Max sounds like. So even if it's just a fan film, you have to be willing to put in the work to sound as close to him as you possibly can. Cogniti would be moving fast. I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. One thing you can count on. You push a man too far, and sooner or later, he'll start pushing back. Well, I've been impersonating Max for probably about 10 years now. When I got into the series with Max Payne 3, Max's voice was the hook for me. It wasn't just the gameplay. The gameplay was fantastic. But I don't think I would have stuck around and actually wanted to know more about the first two games if it wasn't for Jim McCaffrey's performance. The problem was, though, was that with Max's voice, I would do it on occasion. I would do it f for uh, a joke to bother my mom when I was talking about something uh, depressing. My dad would say, it was a bad day today. Or something like that. Now, for the film, I was doing it more frequently every single day. I didn't have so much of a, a practice regimen for it, except for doing some iconic lines in the way McCaffrey would deliver them. I just practiced that uh, by myself, recorded a few times, see how it sounded, go again. It was time to take back control from whoever was out to get me. And if I didn't flush them out, at least my midlife crisis would confuse them enough so they did something stupid. It was the only hope I had. It was time to take back control from whoever was out to get me. And if I didn't flush them out, at least my midlife crisis would confuse them enough so they did something stupid. It was the only hope I had. So I picked up a lot of his vocal nuances and uh, I looked at other shows that he came in to see how he sounded with other types of dialogue, just so I could get into it a little more. I love doing impressions, but uh, this one was really one of my most favorite, but also one of the hardest. And McCaffrey has uh, 40 years on me and a whole bunch more experience than me. So it was cool that I could sound just like one of my, uh, one of my acting icons for a little bit. Uh, the problem was doing that when filming would mean that I was directing as well, talking to everybody on set, making sure everything was good, and then getting in the character with a very tired voice. So it took a lot of drinking water, and there were days when I just couldn't really speak as much at all. Uh, otherwise, I was just going to sound like a, uh, a dollar store Michael Ironside. It, it just wouldn't sound uh, good for the film at all. As time went on, despite the, the difficulty of um, having to know when to give my voice a rest, it did get easier to imitate Max on set and off set. Um, it's actually a little harder to narrate, because when Max narrates, that's one of the biggest, best parts of the game. Not, not just the, the gameplay and the story, but everybody looks forward to hearing Max narrate about his life and narrate about what's happening. Because his, his voice and his delivery style is unique to him, to James McCaffrey, you can't really have a Max Payne game. In fact, you can't have a Max Payne game at all without Jim McCaffrey. So whether or not I sounded like him and 
If my performance does justice to the character of Max, I'll leave that up to the audience. I wouldn't have taken on the role if I felt, well, you don't sound like him, you can't act like him. This, despite the fact that I'm very passionate about it, I think being a fan, being an actual fan of a series means admitting, yeah, I love it, but I, I can't do this role. So I will, I will leave it up to the audience to uh, decide if my voice work was good enough. I'll take, hey, you were almost there. I'll take that. The problem with getting broken is that if you ever manage to put yourself back together, you'll find that there are too many missing pieces for you to ever go back to the way you once were. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the story, we'll talk a little bit more about the choreography. I hope to see you all there.